Good morning everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is our Simple Abundance Year following through Sarah Bond Bronick's book in 2020. And today's entry in the new book, her newly revised edition from 2019, is called The Winter Solstice, which is what I wanted to talk about today. And the solstice is effectively not until tomorrow here in the Northern Hemisphere, the 21st. But apparently it can vary from year to year, somewhere between the 20th to the 22nd. Um, what is the solstice? We talked about the summer solstice, right? Well, the winter solstice is, and I have a kitty down here, that's why I'm videotaping, because she has a brand new toy and she's all frisky, so she was gonna be jumping up. Uh, that's Annabelle, my co-host. She was gonna be jumping up if I wasn't down here. And she might be in the video, but that's always fun anyway. Um, so we talked about the solstice over the summer and remember the equinox is when the light and dark are equal. But the solstice is different. Like we're gonna be having the shortest day of the year on the 21st. I looked it up and it's actually 21 hours, I guess. So, I mean, effectively, we still have 24 hours in the day, but you know, they're talking about the daylight. <laughs> so, so, but it's, it's, it's still a time of hope because even though the days have gotten shorter and this is the shortest day, that means that it's going to be the return of the light because the next day becomes a little bit longer and then and so on. So it's like, it's the lowest point, but then it's like the return of the light. And in fact, when I looked back to Sarah's uh, original version of Simple Abundance, A Day Book of Comfort and Joy, when she talked about the solstice in that edition, she called the entry, Here Comes the Light, which is pretty cool. And she has a quote here, which is also neat, that says, there are two ways of spreading light, to be the candle or the mirror that reflects it. Isn't that cool? That's uh, Edith Wharton that said that. But I think that's, that's a neat thought about being, thinking about the solstice in terms of your own light. So being the light or being the reflection of the light. So what's gonna happen this year? I sort of told you guys that it was a special year and Annabelle's really excited, I think, <laughs> uh, because there is going to be a convergence of, of two planets, like I mentioned the other night, but I didn't have the details, so I'm gonna, I printed out some stuff, so I'm gonna go over that. So yes, it's called the Great Convergence, or con Great, oh, Convergence. We had that word recently, didn't we? Now, and now I'm saying the wrong word. It's the Great Conjunction, similar word, of Jupiter and Saturn. And it doesn't happen often, this thing that's happening. I was looking it up and it said, this will be the closest Jupiter-Saturn conjunction since 1623 CE. That's pretty nuts. And it will be there, um, it was actually uh, July 16th, 1623. But that one was too close to the sun for anyone to observe, they said. And the last alignment, as easy to see as this one this year, was way back in 1226, March 4th, 1226, when the two planets appeared to be just one fifteenth of the moon's diameter apart. It's called the Great Conjunction because Jupiter and Saturn are the two largest planets in the solar system. You'll have to take a look as quickly as you can because it won't last very long. It's going to sink below the horizon. So I'm told that if you go out after sunset tomorrow night, they said, you know, about 45 minutes officially, and then that's when the, the planets will be high enough as possible. You're going to look to the southwest to see them. And you can use your binoculars or if you have a telescope, you probably see it even better. And... The next time that this will happen, we'll all be gone. It will be take place October 30th, 2040. Well, I suppose we could still be here. Depends on how young you are. But, um, and then, wait, hold on. The next great conjunction will take place on October 31st, 2040 in the pre-dawn sky while the next closest great conjunction 
to this week's event won't occur until, well, we'll definitely be gone for this one, March 15th, 2080. And so they are talking about this one being the Christmas star, or the star of Bethlehem, star of Bethlehem. And I did hear that you might be able to see it for a couple nights following, but they're not guaranteeing that. It's just a prediction. Let me see if there's anything else that I didn't say. Come on, did I forget something? We've got the windows open and she's watching the birds. Or the curtains, I should say. All right, so that's that's everything I wanted to say about that. But I really like what Sarah says in her entry about the winter solstice. And I'll read, she has a new quote in the top of this one that says, the winter solstice is the time of ending and beginning. A powerful time, a time to contemplate your immortality, a time to forgive, to be forgiven, and to make a fresh start, a time to awaken. Yeah. That was an American Buddhist teacher named Frederick Lenz who said that way back. Well, he died in 1998, so a long time ago he said it because he was born in 1950. So Sarah tells us about how, think about ancient times where they weren't necessarily totally sure what was happening. And so they would get really nervous because think about being dependent on crops or uh, hunting or whatever and then like you have less time to do all this stuff and then plus it's getting colder and and you don't know if the sun is just gonna stop glowing or whatever if you don't know what's happening so she does tell us about how people that worshipped the things like the sun and the moon and all that they did start to notice the the difference in the sunlight and so they got maybe nervous depressed you know um but then it became, it ended up becoming a celebration, which it is still, still to this day. She's watching the birds. Today, celebrating the winter solstice is becoming very popular. For, he, for people who don't feel comfortable with organized religion or even with the people exploring their own individual path, Honoring the festivals of the natural world fulfills a deep primordial need to connect with the power greater than humanity, no matter what the, that power is called. And I do have to say, my ex-husband, who I've mentioned a couple of times, he could not stand how commercial Christmas was. And it was difficult because you know how I've shared that I loved Christmas and he just sort of tolerated my love of it but we came to a happy medium where we used to celebrate our Christmas on the solstice uh, but you know if you look into the traditions a lot of the things that we do you know like the tree and other things like that they do have pagan roots that go back to solstice traditions anyway but that was like in a way a way that I appeased him not that it matters. I think, you know, we talked about Christmas. It can be Christmas in your heart. It could be celebrated any day of the year. I heard on the news last night that, that the Prime Minister in England is sort of, well, not that he's canceling Christmas, but he's encouraging people to do it in a different way. And I think it would be really difficult to totally uh, change the date, you know, but it might not be a bad idea to just change the date for this particular year so that if people do want to celebrate it, or maybe there'll be a new holiday when when people can be together again, maybe there'll be something like a big celebration that will become new on the calendar and we'll all remember the times when we were apart and then we were able to come back together. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. All right, so how do people celebrate it? They celebrate it as the birthday of the Great Mother. Ecologically minded people such as many Native Americans honor the sacredness of their connection with the earth during this time. Women who have interfaith marriages and can't make a choice between celebrating Hanukkah and Christmas often view the winter solstice as a neutral holiday. So kind of like what I just said with my ex-husband. One meaningful way to celebrate the solstice is to consider it a sacred time of reflection, release, restoration, and renewal. There's a quote here. Winter is the time for comfort, for good food and warmth. That's what English writer Dame Edith Sitwell reminds us. 
for the touch of a friendly hand and for a talk beside the first wait for a touch of a friendly hand and for a talk beside the first I don't know what that means in it is a time for home the winter solstice is also a time to send reconciliation notes to heal a breach a long time family dispute that no one can remember how or why I got started and to send that apology you've been writing in your heart for so long or a card that simply tells someone how much they are missed it's the season for a reason that's interesting I hadn't read that part about the reconciliation or making amends wonder how that started maybe if they thought that the world was ending or something they thought well I better go make it right with people I was reading something else about how men burned bonfires and I thought it was in the book here but it might have been something that I found when I was looking at the astrological conver conjunction I keep wanting to say convergence um, yeah, so there are, and remember when we talked about the solstice in the summer solstice and how big it was in some of the countries where it was like one of their biggest holidays? Well, there are a lot of solstice traditions too, like I mentioned the bonfires and things, and that makes sense because if they were trying to, um, you know, keep the light going and the flame, we talked about candles last time, it could be symbolic of keeping keeping the things going. I'm just looking at the older book to see if there's anything else. When you send out your winter solstice greeting cards, send some to people whom you're not on good terms with or, or those you have quarreled with, just like that other part that she said. To make sure your forgiveness card is not misunderstood, which might make things worse instead of better, rub the cards with lavender buds or ink include them in the envelope the card will offer a heavenly fragrance surely and sweet scent for reconciliation unless the person doesn't like lavender I know there are people that don't it doesn't matter whether we reflect the light through our authentic gifts or whether our authentic calling is to spread it what matters is that tonight the world is dark cold and bleak your flame burns so brightly share your love and warmth with others and watch the light return that's really cool. You know, I didn't put, because I only have um, one little window and a, and the sliding door here, I, I didn't put my Christmas lights in the window like I normally do the candles, you know, that are electric. I could maybe go get one and put it in the window for solstice. I don't know, I'll have to be thinking about that. So I hope you go out and look for the star. There is an entry too about the star. Sorry, my nose is running as I'm looking down here where I'm sitting. I didn't plan to talk about the star, but there is an entry about the star, I thought. Or maybe it's an old book. This video is just totally unplanned. Sorry, I'm still waking up, so... And I have to go to work, so I was trying to do it early before I had to leave. Alright, well, if there is one about the star... Then I'll, I will look for it. I did skip over an entry called Gold Star Days that it kind of goes along with some of the things that I've said already about. Remember I talked to you guys about unforgettable days? Well, Sarah has a story about giving yourself a gold star on certain days if you did really well. Because remember getting stickers on the little sheet where you did stuff in second grade or whatever? Um, that was one of the things about the star, but I feel like there's another entry that I thought I saw, maybe I skipped it, uh, about the star and the significance of the star. I have a star at the top of my Christmas tree, and I'm, I'm still going to do another video about 2021, but I have decided, it's kind of related to the star, and it and I'll have to explain how I came to this word, but you know how I choose a word for each year? I have decided that my word for 2021 is shine. So kind of goes along with the star. So I'll have to make sure that I that I go out and see if I can see the star tomorrow night. Hopefully, hopefully we have a clear night where I am. I hope you see it. 
I hope you have a little kitty or a friend, fuzzy friend to keep you smiling and, and comforted if you live alone like I do. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I know this video is just all over the place, but hopefully you got some information about it and that you'll think about the solstice and ways that you can bring the light or reflect the light. I really like that. Light some candles. <laughs> all right. Love to you all. Bye-bye.